Hi honeys, it's Michelle. I'm here to talk to you about the books that I am anticipating the most for fall and one book that I'm, well, I'm not really anticipating it because I just finished reading it, but it's an arc and it hasn't come out yet. So I felt like I have to tell you about it because it's really good. I'll be doing a full review soon on it, but just to tell you this book here, it's called The Murderous Haircut of the Mayor of Bel Air, A Psychic Barber Mystery by Philip Mottes. And this is the first book in a new series. It's his first book ever. And it's an indie book, meaning he is self-published. And I thought this book was so good. It comes out September 1st. It's about a girl named Danica who is a barber and she's psychic and what happens is when she touches the back of someone's head she can see their thoughts so she'll ask you know what kind of haircut do you want she touches the back of their head and she sees what they're imaging or imagining and she knows how to give them the kind of haircuts they want because of what she can see basically because we're not good at describing what we want especially with hair well, one day she goes to cut someone's hair and she sees visions of a dead body in front of the person. And so she decides to try to figure out what happened. Is this person in her chair a murderer? And just a bunch of stuff ensues from there. If you like old school mysteries, I really recommend this book. It's old school, but with a bunch of modern twists to it, which I really liked. So the author has brought in modern day ways of thinking and lifestyles and what the issues are in the world today kind of thing in our communities. And he's tied it in with old school mystery writing, which I don't know if you can really beat that if you love mystery. So. Once again, this is out September 1st. I definitely recommend this book. And then the rest of these, I don't know if I recommend them. I haven't read them yet. <laughs> I'll be reading them with you if you end up reading them. And, and here's the truth too. Of these books, I will probably end up reading one of each of these per month. I'm not going to read all of them. I haven't decided which ones I'm going to read and which ones I'm not yet. And maybe you can help me with that. Let me know down in the comment section which ones you're interested in hearing me talk about because that would definitely help me figure out what direction to go. And I'm going to be looking down at my notes a lot and I'm sorry, but I, I have to read it to you, right? Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney think you know the person you married? Think again. Things have been wrong with Mr. and Mrs. Wright for a long time. When Adam and Amelia win a weekend away to Scotland, it might be just what their marriage needs. Self-confessed workaholic and screenwriter Adam Wright has lived with face blindness his whole life. He can't recognize friends or family or even his own wife. I've never heard of that. So that alone is pretty interesting. Every anniversary, the couple exchange traditional gifts, paper, cotton, poetry, tin, and each year Adam's wife writes him a letter that she never lets him read. I don't know. Until now, they both know this weekend will make or break their marriage, but they didn't randomly win this trip. One of them is lying, and someone doesn't want them to live happily ever after. Ten years of marriage, ten years of secrets, and an anniversary they will never forget. I mean, I, I've never heard of this author, I've never heard of this book, but when I read that synopsis that I just read you, I thought, I mean, I might have to read it now, right? <laughs> it sounds so good. Now this next book is written by another author that I 
discovered years ago through an arc. And I, well, she actually sent me two or three different arcs. Um, and I've been reading her books ever since. I just love her. Her name is Vicki Delaney and she writes cozy mysteries and she's got a new series coming out. It's called a Catskill Summer Resort Mystery Series. And this is the first book. It's coming out September 7th. Did I tell you this last book? September 7th also. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's called Deadly Summer Nights. It's the summer of 1953, and Elizabeth Grady is settling into Hagerman's Catskills Resort. As a vacation getaway, Hagerman's is ideal, and although Elizabeth's ostentatious but well-meaning mother is new to running the resort, Elizabeth is eager to help her organize the guests and the entertainment acts. But Elizabeth will have to resort to untested abilities if she wants to save her mother's business. When a reclusive guest is found dead in a lake on the grounds and a copy of the Communist Man Manifesto is found in his cabin, the local police chief is convinced that the man was a Russian spy. But Elizabeth isn't so sure and with the fate of the resort hanging in the balance, she'll need to dodge red herrings, withstand the red scare, and catch a killer red-handed. That's one of those ones, I mean, just total transparency here. It sounds okay. Like, I don't know if I like the synopsis, but it's Vicki Delaney, who I personally love. And that's one thing about me. If I love an, uh, a, a writer, I'm very loyal to them. I will read every book they put out from that moment forward. And now I haven't read all of her older books from before I started reading her, but I, I am that way. <laughs> it's just a thing. <laughs> so I will give this a chance and we'll see, but I don't know. What do you think? Does it sound good to you? See, sometimes though, if you're relying on somebody else to write the synopsis, they might not do the best job. So, I don't know. No, 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 no. <laughs> Marty's back. Martin, why don't you come sit up here? I brought your tree in here. I brought one of his cat trees, the scratching post tree things. I'm hoping he'll just sit on here and you guys can look at him, but we'll see. You want to sit up here? Let's see how it goes. <laughs> A cat butt right in your face, right? Hi. September 28th. Marty, why don't you come sit with me? And that way everybody can say hi. You want your chair, huh? I'm looking. I can't find one. You sit up here? I'll lean on your... <laughs> yeah, I'm leaning on your, your scratching post, buddy, until you want to come up here. September 28th. The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward. In a boarded up house on a dead end street at the edge of the wild Washington woods lives a family of three. A teenage girl who isn't allowed outside, not after last time. A man who drinks alone in front of his TV, trying to ignore the gaps in his memory. And a house cat who loves napping and reading the Bible. That sounds like Marty, except Marty likes to read books. He, Marty doesn't read the Bible, but he loves books. Yeah. Did you hear him? <laughs> he is down to read every night. He's waiting for me to come to bed. He leans over. He's looking at the book while I'm reading it, soaking in my responses to the books. It's kind of funny. <laughs> An unspeakable secret binds them together. But when a new neighbor moves in next door, what is buried out among the birch trees may come back to haunt them all. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a fun getting ready for Halloween kind of book, right? October 5th, Cackle by Rachel Harrison. A dark, funny, frightening novel about a young woman learning how to take what she wants from a witch who may be too good to be true from the author of the return 
all her life, Annie has played it nice and safe. After being unceremoniously dumped by her longtime boyfriend, Annie seeks a fresh start. She accepts a teaching position that moves her from Manhattan to a small village upstate. She's stunned by how perfect and picturesque the town is. The people are all friendly and warm. Her new apartment is dreamy too, minus the oddly persistent spider infestation. Ooh. Then she meets Sophie, beautiful, charming, magnetic Sophie, who takes a special interest in Annie, who wants to be her friend. More importantly, she wants Annie to stop apologizing and start living for herself. That's how Sophie lives. Annie can't help but gravitate toward the self-possessed Sophie, wanting to spend more time with her. Despite the fact that the rest of the townsfolk seem a little afraid of her. And like, okay, there are some things. Sophie's appearance is uncanny and ageless. Her mansion in the middle of the woods feels a little unearthly. And she does seem to wield a certain power. But she couldn't be. Could she? October 19th, The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling. Now I'm going to tell you first real quick. This is a little out of my wheelhouse, but I'm not looking for comfort zone reading all the time. Practical, unassuming Jane Shoringfield has done the calculations and decided that the most secure path forward is this. A husband in a marriage of convenience who will allow her to remain independent and occupied with meaningful work. Her first choice, the dashing but reclusive Dr. Augustine Lawrence, agrees to her proposal with only one condition, that she must never visit Lindridge Hall, his crumbling family manor outside of town. Yet on their wedding night, an accident strands her at his door in a pitch black rainstorm and she finds him changed. Gone is the bold, courageous surgeon and in his place, is a terrified, paranoid man, one who cannot tell reality from nightmare and fears Jane is an apparition come to haunt him. By morning, Augustine is himself again, but Jane knows something is deeply wrong at Lindridge Hall and with the man she has so hastily bound her safety to. Set in a dark mirror version of post-war England, Starling crafts a new kind of gothic horror from the bones of the beloved canon. This Crimson Peak inspired story assembles, then appends, every expectation set in place by Shirley Jackson and Rebecca and will leave readers shaken, desperate to begin again as soon as they are finished. Well, dang, that is, that is a tall order. I have had some books like that where like, I'm hungover and I just want to read that book over again and I want to experience it again, but also for the first time. If it's that good, like how do I not read it, right? You see why I need your help. <laughs> I can't decide this on my own. Um, now one book that does come out in this time, I think it comes out in September, is the new Leanne Moriarty book. I didn't want to mention that one though because I did in my last anticipated video, anticipated books video. Yeah, I'm tired. I'll explain at the end of the video. <laughs> October 26th, Comfort Me with Apples by Catherine M. Valent, Valente? I'm not sure. It's a short story, okay? It's, I think it was under 200 pages. So to me, that's a short story. Sophia was made for him, her perfect husband. She can feel it in her bones. He is perfect. Their home together in Arcadia Gardens is perfect. Everything is perfect. It's just that he's away so much, so often. He works so hard, but sometimes Sophia wonders about things, strange things, dark things. The look on her husband's face when he comes back from a long business trip, the questions he will not answer, 
the locked basement she is never allowed to enter. And whenever she asks the neighbors, they can't quite meet her gaze. But everything isn't perfect, is it? Yeah, it doesn't sound like everything's perfect. Uh, that sounds kind of creepy. Now, I'm trying to figure out how they can do that in under 200 pages, though. Um, but it does sound <laughs> pretty inter interesting. I think just from experience, there's nothing creepier than the thought of realizing after you're married that this person isn't who you thought they were. That might have happened to me once or twice. <laughs> Not with Brad, I mean, before. But, hi, Marty. <laughs> oh, he's going to love his chair when we get it, huh? You're going to like your chair. Oh, oh can you give me a kiss? Hi. So that book does sound pretty good. I Personally, I think no secrets. I mean, it's a book, so that is supposed to scare us, so that's fine. But me personally, like I'm one of those people that if I have, like with Brad, we have each other's passwords for everything. And I think because of that, neither one of us is ever tempted to even look. Like, I'm welcome to look in his wallet, his phone, his email whenever I want, and vice versa. And because I have the passwords and he doesn't care, I'm like, why look? I mean, <laughs> it's so much easier to trust somebody that way, don't you think? All right, let's move on. You want to move on? What? Why are you looking at me funny? <laughs> He's looking at me like, am I? I'm not reading without you. You're right here. I always, like I said, at night when I'm laying in bed, we read together, and he, he loves being part of the reading. And I don't know if he's, he's looking at me funny, like he's, <laughs> let me drink my coffee. <laughs> so I'm doing something wrong. Oh, okay. Getting down again. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it's, it's wrong. He's a cat though. He's very hard to please. <laughs> November 19th. A Place to Bury Strangers by Mark Dawson. Would you stop? If I put the papers that I've already read from on the ground, he scratches them. If I hold them in my hand, he keeps hitting the papers with his tail. He just really wants you to know that he's here and he's saying hi and he loves you. <laughs> huh. A dog walker finds a human bone on lonely Salisbury Plain. DCI Mackenzie Jones investigates the grisly discovery, but cannot explain how it ended up there. She contacts disgraced ex-detective Atticus Priest, and the two of them trace the bone to a graveyard in the nearby village of <laughs> Ember. But the village was abandoned after it was purchased by the Military of Defense to train the army. I'm sorry, there's nothing funny that I'm reading. It's just Marty cracks me up. <laughs> so why have the bodies been buried in the graveyard since the church was closed? At the same time, Atticus is approached by a single dad who needs his help to track down his missing daughter. Atticus takes the case and finds himself battling a London gang who are selling their drugs in Salisbury and a host of witnesses who don't seem to be telling him the truth. Atticus and Mac deal with the fiendishly complex case and unpick a conspiracy that cuts to the heart of the English establishment while dealing with their own feelings for one another. Ooh, I get it. Mac and Atticus, huh? Mm -hmm. November 23rd, These Precious Days by Anne Patchett. The beloved New York Times bestselling author reflects on home, family, friendships, and writing in this deeply personal collection of essays. Any story that starts will also end. As a writer, Anne Patchett knows what the outcome of her fiction will be. Life, however, often takes turns we do not see coming. Patchett, wonder, 
Patchett ponders this truth in these wise essays that afford a fresh and intimate look into her mind and heart. I thought that sounded like kind of a sweet book to read around Thanksgiving. I don't typically read essay books, you know, but I will. I mean, if I think I'll like them, right? I think I've read probably five or six in my lifetime. Most of them were probably in the late 90s and they were probably Chicken Soup for the Soul books. Do you guys remember those? They were like everybody's jam back then. <laughs> Depending on your age, you might not remember, but people read the ever-living crap out of those books once upon a time. Chicken Soup for the Soul, it was magnifique. And this feels like it might be kind of like that, kind of revisiting that warm, cozy, fuzzy feeling. And I was just thinking, gosh, with Thanksgiving and really wanting to make a concerted effort to live life, appreciate life, just kind of snuggle into life a little bit more. I thought this, this would be a really nice book around the holidays. So it doesn't come out till the 23rd of November. So to me, that's the perfect time to kind of start easing into that cozy holiday feel. Okay, and the last book is You'll Be the Death of Me by Karen M. McManus. Now she's a YA author and I don't read a lot of YA, but I do read some. And I just read The Cousins by her. Um, when did I read it? Do I have a note in here? Oh, I didn't annotate this one. When I annotate, I put, or when I annotate, I put the dates, but I didn't annotate this one, but I really enjoyed this. I recommend this book too, by the way, but so because I liked it so much, it's kind of VC Andrews like, but not, um, you know, without the incest and stuff. <laughs> it's like, but it's got that kind of like creepy, family secrets kind of thing, but not so excessively creepy, not so triggering. <laughs> but um, anyway, I, I do really like this one. So because I like it, I thought I'm going to give her new book a chance. And I found this little blurb about the book that I thought kind of described it better or made it sound more enticing than the synopsis. So I'm just going to read you that from the author of one of us is lying, which is I think the one I just showed you, right? <laughs> no, that's the cousins. <gasps> I can't remember the name of books a lot of the time. Comes a brand new pulse pounding thriller. It's Ferris Bueller's Day Off with murder. <laughs> Sign me up. When three old friends relive an epic ditch day and it goes horribly and fatally wrong. Okay, that, I mean, that's... The synopsis, it was like all over the place. It didn't make sense. But when I read this, I thought, okay, that's a book that I want to read. And this comes out November 30th. So this will be a little bit of a exiting Thanksgiving, entering Christmas slash Yule slash Hanukkah slash. There's a lot of them. If I forgot what you celebrate, I'm sorry. I've tried to think of everything, but there's so many. <laughs> Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa. And then we've got the New Year, New Year's after that. It kind of feels like this might be a nice book though between Thanksgiving and the season of lights. <laughs> so that is all of the books that I'm anticipating for fall. Let me know down in the comments what you think I should read. But also, if I didn't mention something that you're anticipating, let me know. I'll look into it and maybe I'll put that on my to read or wish list also. Maybe. I'm in a bit of a, I think I mentioned this recently, but I'm in a, what I'm calling a half-assed buying freeze. <laughs> Where if uh, I'm getting a book of the month each month. I'm getting a new release pretty much each month, just one. So two books. And then if the books that I'm currently reading have 
or in a series like the Charlene Harris books that I'm reading that series and for the next one in the series I don't have I will buy it but other than that I've decided that I'm on a buying freeze <laughs> we'll see if I stick to that so that'll be the hard part is if I stick to what I'm saying I can only buy one book a month off that list and I listed more than one book a month that's coming out that I want to read. That's why I need your help. So if you want to know why I'm tired and this weird, long drawn out story about how I didn't get any sleep last night, stay tuned. If you don't care, I understand. I don't even know if I care and it's my life. So um, if you don't care, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day or night. And if you do care, so Brad and I, we couldn't fall asleep last night. We went to bed probably at midnight, which I mean, that's kind of normal for me because I like to read in bed and books cause insomnia. Am I right? But last night he couldn't fall asleep. And in fact, I think I fell asleep before him. And then I woke up around 1.30 and couldn't fall back asleep and he was still awake and neither one of us could fall asleep at that point so I finished this book <laughs> went through all my annotations made sure everything was the way I wanted it to be got my review all figured out what I want to say and all that I ended up being awake until four 4 to 10, something like that. And then I fell back asleep. And I, we usually get up at 5.30 because we both have jobs that require us to start work very early in the morning and then early, end early in the afternoon. And we both slept through our alarms. We woke up at 6 <laughs> and we're exhausted. But for some reason, it's like I'm, I have this like no sleep energy thing going. And I'm still excited about reading, so I'm probably going to try to read anyway. But there's this weird thing, though, and I think it's affecting both of us a lot. The fires that are coming through, well, there's, there's fires in California, and we're getting all the smoke, and it's getting, like, trapped here in the uh, valley. It's so bad right now. I went to go have game night with the girls last night, and on my way home, it was so smoky that I could not see the mountains in any direction. And as it started to get dark, it kind of felt like I was on the set for like a Jack the Ripper movie or something. <laughs> it was just this like eerie, like really, really foggy, dark, dank air. And everybody's complaining right now around here about their eyes are really glassy and like itchy their um, throats hurt their you know their mouths are really dry anyway it's this whole thing and I think it was making it hard for us to sleep last night because it just felt like we couldn't breathe it's thicker than it's been all season oh I just had <clears throat> another coughing moment it's um it is really hard having this much smoke in the air I mean it's not in the apartment but it might as well be with how much havoc it is wrecking on my asthma too much don't like all this smoke so thank you so much for watching <laughs> i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night i love you bye i would tell marty to say bye but he already left the room he got bored with us